What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 4 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Grimgore Ironhide campaign. So as we saw last time, we were able to destroy Hag Grief for good, Malice and Zarkan will not be seen again, and neither will Yuen Bo as the Jade Dragon's lands fell to the Greenskin hordes right after. I guess the Greenskin type of green is much superior to all that Jade. Lovely. Uh, we ended off the episode with declaring war on the defenders of the Great Plan, the remnants of Nakai's faction, and or little mini sub -fact and are looking to destroy them and take control of all of Albion in this particular episode. Uh, before we get going, we did once again manage to reach that engagement threshold, and thus this episode will be an hour long, and the offer will once again stand. 400 likes and 50 comments, and the next episode will follow the hour-long format. I did not move you far enough. Huh. But yeah, anyway, so keep that in mind when dropping those likes and comments below. As uh, fight Blood Reaper, move closer to Lonely Ogben. I don't know why I didn't move you so far last episode. I do know that Grimgore... Hmm, let's think about this. Can we win this battle against all of these Saurus while in March Dance? A, and B, will this guy be actually willing to fight us? Well, we can, we can win. We can easily win because we can destroy them with magics. Now the question is, will he fight us? Alright, here's what we gotta do. We're gonna move you out, let's say, here, Grimgore. Something like this. I don't know. Uh, we need This guy probably won't go south, right? Because he'll either want to attack us or return to his own land. So I don't see him going south, or at least I doubt it. And... Huh? Oh, you can move a little further because you're in full speed sense. Alright, that's fine. Uh, go, let's say, this way. We need to, at the same time, be able to catch this army, so from here we should be able to reach anywhere he goes, right? Alright, let's hope that this works, eh? <laughs> and if he attacks us, well, then we'll have to use our magics uh, to destroy him. Alright, moment of truth in a second. Let's check out our buildings, though. Actually, no, you know what? We, well, actually, uh, let's build a couple of these idols here in the Plain of Battles in the Lost Valley. Start already expanding the, uh, the buildings in the Lizard Territories, but the expensive stuff, like Newland being upgraded to Tier 5, we can reduce further next turn because we'll get that minus 10% construction cost buff. So we'll save it. This is much more important. Let's see... If the lizards go for us, or try to avoid us in such a way that we can still catch them. If they go if they go south, and I'm completely wrong about this, this will be quite annoying, as we'll have to give chase. Though I would imagine that the extra campaign movement range means that Grimgore should be able to... I don't see them anymore. Well, that's not good. <laughs> and, oh, okay, I see them on the map. Wait, where are you here? Uh... You're in March stance. I oh, probably should have gone for us. Oh, but are you out of our range? No, you're not out of our range. Oh, you just screwed yourself. All right, well, we got this. And ooh, hello. Research 8 Technologies completed Talisman of Preservation and the Razor Standard. And well, <laughs> that's just from a fantastic. Don't mind if I do. Uh, we also need to defeat this guy. Well, we were looking to do so anyway. Talisman of Preservation and Razor Standard. Let's give that to Grimgore. Unlike so, he already has Gitsnik. And what can we replace with? I guess we don't need the Gobbo Ran to get that Razor standard in there. Put it on another unit of Black Orcs once we get those guys. That looks good to me. And let's give the Talisman of Endurance to either the River Troll Hag. Now, the River Troll Hag has regeneration. It's good to you, sir. And we'll give it to another Lord later on. I like that better. Oh. Uh, you can maybe have the Sword of Anti-Heroes. We get a little bit more attack, and we can give the Shrieking Blade to, let's say... Maybe the Gobbo? Power him up a little bit. Shrieking Blade, and we already have the Warrior Bane on the uh, River Troll Hag. Alright, let's do levels. Grimgore, you're going through Deadly Blade, and that has not stopped. I should also really take a look at some of these things, but they all have negatives, and... 
Not sure that I'm willing, at least right now. We gotta power up the army a little bit more, which is why we're getting all those expensive building upgrades. You, sir, are gonna get measured rage to try to get towards battle leader. Gotta love that uh, vigor loss reduction for you, but otherwise the uh, buff out of get em, boys. Orc Shaman, you have your arcane conduit for the additional spell mastery and power recharge. And I suppose you can max out scouting next. River Troll Hag, you have Soul Blade and Spirit Leech maxed. Let's head you into magical reserves and try to go for Arcane Conduit for you as well. And then lastly, Uzga Spider Killer. Ironic name. Should be Spider Tamer, probably. I guess you can have... Honestly, Survivalist doesn't seem like it's all that worthwhile to you because you're, you're going to be fairly low in terms of HP. Hmm... Maybe we get opportunist. Let's get your opportunist. Feels more appropriate for a uh, for a little gabo. All right. Well, let's see what we can do about this and head into the battle immediately. I guess we could have built some buildings, but I'm too excited about um, dropping massive spells on all of these uh, Saurus. And it says close victory, which does make me curious as to why the enemy decided uh, not to attack us, even though we baited them by being in march dance ourselves. Anyway, a Razor Standard, you're gonna go on one of the Orc Biggins, at least until we replace them with the Black Orcs, and away we go. Alrighty, the horizon there looked a little bit uh, weird for a second, or the landmass that we can just see in the background. Are those supposed to be trees? Those, those gotta be way too big to be trees, right? Huh. Kind of hard to tell. But anyway, anyway, here we go. A absolutely massive pile of Saurus is arrayed against us. In theory, better than our orc boys in practice. Well, we're gonna have to wait and see. Besides, they are... wait. Uh, oh, they're gonna move in. Oh, lovely. All right, well, uh, let's see. Well, what do they've got? It's Biggins out front and Black Orcs as well, plus Grimgor is going to wade in to the formation of Saurus together with his pal there. We are going to wait for the enemy to blob up a little bit more before hitting them with any spells, however, as we don't want to waste them. All right, and we've essentially taken uh, this position right in the center of the uh, of the map where we can't really get surrounded, or at the very least if we can, it is to our advantage as the enemy will have a lot of trouble because of it. More of the source are moving in, though they are reasonably slow at 32. Well, about standard speed for infantry. And it looks like the enemy source Scarvet, or source Old Blood rather, has made it into the fray as well, and Grimgor's trying to break through the press to get towards it. Alright, and it looks like we've nearly reached critical mass on the sheer number of source there, and we're just about ready to hit them with a big ol' spell. So here we go, an overcast foot of a Gork, or possibly a Mork, and gonna come down on him. And there we go. Let's see those lizards fly. I'm gonna get some nice air out of that, but not a lot of them just instantly explode, but I'm willing to bet that despite the model loss being relatively minimal, the damage is there. One, two, three, let's say units got basically down to a quarter of its, their HP, and then another three or four units and got down to about half HP, so absolutely massive. 22 kills, but 46k damage from the single spell. Pretty darn nasty. And there's the Edbutt to come in and help out as well. Grimgor has made his way forward and gotten a few kits at that Saurus Old Blood. And it looks like the Old Blood is pretty much done. 160 HP remaining and a Spirit Leech comes down to bring him down. How dare you run from Grimgor. And the rest of the Saurus that were badly damaged by the Foot of Gork following that Edbutt are going to book it on out of there. Though there are plenty more Saurus to fight where that came from. The battle is hardly over. Uh, yeah, these guys are gonna book it, but we got one, two, three, four full HP units. These three are still in relatively good HP as they never got hit by magics and will thus probably come back. And we got a couple more over on this side that decided to loop around our biggins and black orcs and try to fight the uh, orc boys defending the rear of our army. 
Although I don't think that's going to work out so well for them either, as the enemy simply gets surrounded due to the fact that our orc boys outnumber the relatively limited amount of Saurus that decided to loop around like this. And we got a little bit of help from our boar boy biggins as well. 54 damage, and they do have that Lichbone Pennant. The enemy Saurus were at, so Saurus were at, Saurus Warriors have 10% physical resistance, huh? That's something. Um, but it won't be enough. Uh, let's see, some of the enemy units are returning, but we're gonna send our lords and heroes in to start fighting them out front, and of course our biggins will follow suit in a second. Grimgor had to get the first few axe blows in. I love those uh, jumping animations that the uh, spear swords do, where they leap up and uh, try to check their spear. The... I believe... Uh, that... Brockgar has the same animation. Alright, not that that matters in this particular case, or at least it doesn't matter too much, though we do have to remember once again that uh, Grimgor has relatively low melee defense. He shouldn't be too afraid of a few regular units like this. Especially now that he has Gitsnik. And there we go, and the uh, boys, the biggins, and the black orcs join the fray as well, though it looks like the black orcs won't be nearly as needed uh, this time around. And their armor piercing goes a little bit, or at least somewhat, to waste on the Saurus Spears, which at 45 aren't particularly heavily armored. Nor, I might add, do the Saurus have a lot of armor piercing on them, which is going to be a problem if they ever want to fight and Black Orcs and even our Biggins, as they are fairly heavily armored at 95 standard as well. Anyway, the balance power at about 90% in our favor, a few more Saurus units isolated and still fighting, but I don't imagine for too much longer. It looks like we have the number advantage now and the enemy Saurus are just being overrun. Probably something they're used to if the Skaven invasions of Lustria are anything to go by. And there we go. With that, they are all shattered and done. Should be... let's see. Oh wait, there's no need to chase them down. Yes, that's good, good, good. Uh, we would have been unfortunate to have to chase them, and we probably wouldn't have been able to do too much damage, but in this case, we didn't need to. A uh, close victory for us. We did take a little bit of damage, but I I don't think it was a close victory. Let's, uh, let's make some... let's compare. Yeah, alrighty, very nice. I would say that Gork puts the bill in this particular battle as that one foot of Gork basically crippled uh, the enemy army, dishing out so much damage to so many of their main line Saurus. And of course, the Lord being destroyed by uh, Grimgor couldn't have uh, and couldn't have helped. Now we are at sea, so I'm not 100% sure how much we'd heal up. On the other hand, hmm. We can get 4,000 gold. We are looking pretty okay in terms of gold. Once again, we have to keep in mind that this will be lost sooner rather than later. I think just in case I'm going to eat the captives because yeah, I just want to. Although, I really don't know whether we'd heal up here. You know what? I guess we'll know for next time after we know. And ah, yeah, that we do heal here. All right, I shouldn't have done that, but oh well, not a big deal. Uh, Scarecrow banner for free, not that we really need one right now. We'll also pop ourselves into full speed stance and get as close as we can to this remnants of battle in the hope of looping around and then, oh, probably should have just gone, eh, you know what, maybe we can land at the Citadel of Lead right after. I think that works. Battle Masters is available for free leadership. We can also freely take, okay, not quite freely, at least not in that stance, a lonely Ogben. And then we need to book it down to Conquata and the Citadel of Lead before they... Oh! We actually have to fight this. Well, I guess they do have a, a feral steg there. All right, fine, we'll fight it. In a second game, in a second. I'm sure the Gabo piles can handle this. Or at least I hope so. Uh, melee defense plus five on, say, the Gabo unit. And a Lichbone Penanton probably doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, let's give it to the... Elite Spider Rider unit, I think. Magical plus poison. Should be a fun time. Alright, we'll fight that in a second. We do have a little bit of admin to take care of before we do, so let's, uh, let's take care of it. Muddy Point. 
first of all, uh, get the Black Orc Barracks up and running. We can't get the Stomping Grounds yet because we need them to level up. And we can also get, let's say... Probably want the boss's tent to get the public order fixed up, and... Let's start on those Gabo tents. Hmm. On the other hand, well, no, I was just thinking where we, uh, where are we going to build our main military structures, and I think that's the Great Ohm, more importantly. And, oh, I just realized we don't have raiding tents here. Alright, fine, go for raiding tents. Raiding tents everywhere. Oh, we can't build it right now, damn it. Ah, oh, game. I mean, I guess we could build the raiding tents after. And the more we go into Gabo City, the more research we have, construction cost, all that sort of good stuff, huh? And the income from adjacent provinces, I guess, to some degree, ain't too bad either. Alright, fine, we'll do that first. Uh, Lost Road, Newland. Yes, we'll upgrade you, max level. And we'll keep for a couple turns and give it ear, so that we can upgrade these things a little bit quicker. You are going to go for that stunty mine? Is that a captured mine, or is that a mine of stunties? Uh, the minus 11 has kind of got me concerned, but we should be able to build up a public order building here in a few turns. Uh, Sherwield Forest, let's upgrade you. Though you're going to take a while as well. Eight turns, eh? Eh, whatever. I'm not going to bother switching the uh, commandment to reduce that, because we don't really care that much about Sherwield Forest. It's mainly going to be there to build various types of towers and capacities. Big Thinking is up as well. We don't really have the scrap capacity to make good use of it as yet. Hmm. Let me do have, let's see, scrap upgrades for Black Orcs, Colossal Squig, and Black Orcs and basically all the Squig units. Interesting. Uh, pointy rocks, or pointier rocks. I guess we already have access to regular pointy rocks. Ooh, armor piercing weapon damage plus 8 for savage or cavalry units. Certainly an interesting option. Boar riding. I think we still have to go for gobble crackdown, though. Leadership for work units and infantry weapon strength. And gonna be quite useful for everybody. There's a bunch. Oh, hello. No complaining. Okay, yeah, no, we're, we're, we're heading towards no complaining. That's the main thing. And I guess as soon as we get no complaining, we'll get our first legendary uh, great shaman lord, Rocknick Spider Claw. And, well, I guess we'll pay 10,000 for him. And then that'll be our spider army, which we can transfer from you and allow you to go night goblins plus, plus squigs. That'll work. And let's get you two more points in Dagabos, since you're going to have night goblin units, which you, I guess, already do. This should have been auto-resolvable, but, ha. Huh. Well, that's interesting. The orc boys will die. <laughs> well, they won't when we play it, or at least I, I hope. We'll see. Hey, look at that little uh, speech from our little Gabo friend here. Anyway, here we go, and you got your squig. Ah, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, I can't wait to get our squig army on the field, or at the very least a half squig army. Well, I haven't decided exactly how it's going to be formulated, but I am excited to see how it works. Anyway, uh, the issue here is going to be this. Our units of spider riders barely do any damage, and the line of infantry, missile, and melee we have is pretty darn minimal, so we'll see. We'll see just how long it takes to bring down a few swords. Oh wow, this one got knocked down, but not out as he tries to chase all those spider riders. A few volleys into this unit of Soros and they've taken maybe 10% HP. One, two, three, I think four units of spider riders. Nope, five units of spider riders are firing at them. And yeah, okay, about a minute of fire from five units of spider riders does... 15 to 20% damage to an unshielded unit of Saurus. Oh uh, well, uh, let's help them out. These spore exploders are going to move in and try to do some damage. Of course, we can't stay in the fray because the uh, uh, the pump wagons are very fragile. So we're going to move on and hit them, disrupt their formation, and then move back out. Over on this side, it looks like a few of the enemy have arrived, and their elites in particular have arrived. Big ol' Stegadon, the feral variety, as well 
well as some cold one spear riders, okay, regular riders, followed suit and by some croxagores. The feral steg is fortunately pretty much done as all five of our units of gobbo archers, led by the rusty errors, are focusing it down. And at the very least, the relatively limited number of infantry we have should still be able to hold the enemy off long enough for our archers to do damage. And obviously, while the damage is low on those archers, their numbers are still going to be much higher than the uh, and then the spider riders, as in the number of uh, models per unit, and thus the number of arrows fired. Alright, and we're starting to focus down those Kroxagors now, their armor sundered and thus taking a little bit more damage from our archers and I guess to a little bit of a degree or to some degree our melee as well. Nice little choke point battle we have going on here. A bit of a reverse siege in this particular situation, as it's almost like we're the ones trying to hold the enemy off. And we do have to switch targets for a little while as the enemy javelin uh, skinks are firing away at us. And we do have to be careful as you got to be uh, wary of javelin skinks. They can certainly dish out plenty of damage. Although they should go down reasonably quickly under fire from so many orc archers, or, no, I wish orc archers, gabo archers. And it's still taking a while. That's a lot of time focused by five archer units on a tier one unshielded, completely unarmored unit. And they're still not down and out. Although they will be soon. They'll probably have used up all of their complement of javelins. Alright, you know what? I'm glad that we couldn't counter resolve this. This has turned out to be a fun little fight. Mostly by virtue of the relative weakness of this army. But nonetheless. Alright, and the javelins are booking it on out of there, but the croxagores are coming back in. Fortunately, they are heavily damaged, and a few more shots into them will break them. We're gonna get that gobbo net down on them to prevent them from moving, so that we can... Wow, they only stopped moving for like a second. <laughs> Man, that does not last long, does it? Considering it's a Regiment of Renown's ability, maybe it should be a little bit longer? <laughs> not that it matters this time around, as the Kroxagors will drop under all that missile fire. Let's check back on what's going on in the rest of the battle. Uh, the Some of the Source Warriors have peeled away and smashed into those goblins. We do have the Logi Bogi Spore Exploders down to about half HP. Uh, though fortunately, the Source are far, far too slow to catch uh, the Zippy Spider Riders, who have been firing away for this entire time. These guys have killed two, a total of two Saurus, and have used about 75, maybe 80% of their ammunition so far. These guys similarly. Almost all their ammunition and two kills. And yeah, the Saurus are not taking a lot of damage from them. On the bright side though, similar thing going on over here. We've got one Saurus down. <laughs> And almost all the ammunition gone. No kills, in fact, on you uh, with all of your ammunition gone. But at the very least, they did manage to lead this source unit away from the rest of the enemy formation. And damn, we're going to need a lot more buffs on the Spider Riders before we can consider them to be a, a viable unit, let's say. As in, we can't build an army around them. Until they do a lot more damage. Gonna have to rely on the Arachnorox and maybe some of these Spider Rider melee types in the army. Of course, the missile types can also go into melee, but just considering the damage they deal, it's... Eh. But hey, they're light cab and they're skirmisher cab. You're not going to expect them to do anything crazy, let's face it. Anyway, it uh, looks like the enemy army is... Um, well, I'll say down, but not yet out. They're certainly losing a decent amount of troops and have lost their elites. Looks like their Lord unit, the Saurus Warriors Lord unit, has gotten out of there. And now we just have to isolate and destroy whatever other Saurus units remain. Though it does look like it'll have to be our melee and missile infantry that does it for us, as the Spider Riders aren't really doing much of anything. <laughs> 6,000 damage and 2 kills for their entire complement of ammunition. And funnily enough, against units of Saurus that are fairly low armored as well. A late game will be encountering units that are going to be a lot more heavily armored than 45 armor after all. 
All right, and in we go. Really could have used some Night Goblin fanatics in this particular army, but, uh, well, we'll get those up and running in short order, let's say. And here comes the Lord on his squig. Haven't gotten too many of his shots. I imagine that the... I hmm, wonder if one of these types of squigs is big enough to swallow a Saurus hole. Can't quite see because of the spore splodas moving in, and we just surround and hit this enemy unit of source from every side, so that forces them to break and shatter. Looks like more units are moving down to this checkpoint where lies the corpse of that feral stick. It'd be interesting if corpses of giant units could act as a uh, as a barrier to some units. Though I guess you could probably cheese that in some way and block off a few uh, places, but then again, it would cost you some big ol' units, so who knows. Alright, well, it looks like the last of the poor skinks have been pretty much destroyed by the arrow fire from the goblin archers. There are still a few more units of skinks running around, and there are those units of Saurus that were being annoyed by our units of Cav that are going to take absolute ages to return to the fray. I'm hoping that they are being, are gonna be, rather, too slow. And we will be able to force the battle to end before they can return to the settlement. We did essentially bait them way, way outside of the settlement after all. All right, Forest Goblin Spider Riders trying to dish out a little bit of damage. Of course, the bow wielders aren't going to do too much, but they're distracting the javelin cohort and preventing them from firing said javelins. Here come the pump wagons to help them out as well. I'm getting some nice little clashes of uh, weaker units. But it is nice to see. All right, very nice, very nice. Knock them away, disrupt their formation, and is this a second unit? Looks like a second unit of skink cohorts, but these are the cudgel types rather than the uh, uh, rather than the javelin types, and that's a lot less scary. I never even, I basically never ever build these because the javelin ones are really good. You can pretty much spam them in the early game. An army full of nothing but javelin uh, skinks and a a couple units of fire leech bolas makes for a very cheap, very effective lizard army. You could probably carry, I don't know, at least half of the game using without ever building a single source unit and thus saving a ton of money if you desire to do so. More on how to snowball with the lizards later. Anyway, uh, let's see. We've got the enemy skinks surrounded, but without their Saurus line, they are not going to stand much of a chance. Arrows of various types smashing into them and poisoning them. And yeah, we got Skarsnik, Death's Juice, Sundered Armor, Poison, and something else was on them briefly. But it looks like not for much longer as they are booking it on out of there. The last of the units remaining is a unit of skink cohorts and still that poor unit of Saurus trying to return. Uh, Alright, but I think a couple of charges into these guys. Oh man, the spider riders don't even have enough mass to send the skinks flying. That's a little bit of a shame. And not to worry, when if we're looking for spider mass, we will have arachnoroks before you know it. I think this particular campaign will be the earliest I ever get a pile of tier 4 and 5 units, just because of the way that Albion works, since we can, and because of the massive amount of growth that the orcs can get, since we can get tier 5 settlements up really, really quickly. It'll be fun to be using elite armies much earlier in the game. In fact, I might even take a few notes on this for future campaigns, it may be worth the time in the mid-game to, say, advance like 20 turns and just to be able to grow and get elite units rather than doing too much winning via basic units. Though, of course, all units, as is tradition on this channel, will be used in various armies, so we will still be using basic units, but elite units in other armies as well. As much at the same time as possible. Slaneshi giggle. Anyway, the battle is uh, just about over. This one unit of skinks is out, and that one unit of Saurus will shatter as soon as we get near it, having done absolutely nothing in this particular battle. You guys should be ashamed of, your sh of yourselves. A shameful spawning.
Ooh, alrighty. Well, I can see why the other resolve was saying what it was saying. It's very tough for these spider riders to do damage. And I think one of them during the actual battle, these numbers, the kill numbers in this screen are actually inflated. But the, during the battle, one of these guys managed to kill a total of two Saurus. Two. Uh, after using every single one of their air arrows completely out of ammunition and managed to kill two so and definitely gonna have to be careful with the way that we formulate our spider army in particular it may need a few other units than the spiders i guess but we'll see Alrighty, we'll occupy the place i guess in fact there is no real reason to do anything else so occupy i got a free sword of might which we can turn into something else in spite yeah looks like you'll be waiting for grimgore to come around and order to make your army better how long until we have two turns and then we'll be able to get night goblin fanatics to uh, be part of your main line spite because you damn well aren't going to need them i believe that's all we got to do this turn i guess we can move ug right here into the great hogs i like so as he will be recruiting their next turn i don't think he needs to recruit anything right now i mean I guess we could get a couple of trolls. Stone trolls for the uh, Gabo army, for example. Hmm. It's not that Grimgore really needs them, let's face it. I mean, maybe he could use a couple, but I will I will think about it. I'm not sure that it's uh, I'm not sure that it's quite necessary. Alright, we'll wait on you. Let me just see here. If we make you a Squig and Gabo army. The... where are the squig buffs? Alright, so squig buffs are in fact shared with various orc cav units, but you're going to be primarily buffing the... Uh, uh, the various gobos, like nastier via nastier squigs and via beta night sneaking. Hmm. I mean... It's not like two units of trolls would be all that much. It'll make your army so much more effective. All right, fine. Uh, two units of trolls. Then. Well, then again, Colossal Squig could serve a similar purpose now, but they need to be anchoring the line. Then again, we could use heroes to anchor the line as well. It's uh, the the main the main reason I'm deliberating like this is because we have a very limited number of trolls that we can get, and I wanted to make a troll army relatively soon. And I think we can do without. I'd rather get the troll army operational for when we invade the. Uh, uh, the nearby territories. Let us build up the lonely Ogben with another idol for more growth, and I believe that's all we can do. So skip, 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 and turn, get the island, get the citadel of lead, knock out the lizards, and get ready to go. I guess we could also potentially do the second quest, the quest for the... Uh, and blood forged armor. It would be nice for Grimgore to have that before we invade. I also see the defenders are recruiting. Can't be letting them do that too much. All right, so here's what we'll do. Ah, uh, decent likelihood they'll actually manage to take one of these, but oh well. I'm still going to continue building them up. All right, so spite blood reaper. Here's what I'd like you to do: go into march stance and go as close to the citadel of lead as possible. I guess this way, Grimgore. I would like you to go into Nun Stance, so grab the Remnants of Battle, and haul True Silver, I guess, Heavy Iron again. Eh, we still have it from last time, so we got 12 turns of it, very nice. And then you're going to go into March Stance, or Full Speed Stance, whatever, and you're going to land right here. We're going to use Spite Blood Reaper to hit the Citadel of Lead, we'll auto-resolve it with Grimgore nearby, while Grimgore moves past the place, and can you go into March, or... Rating now. Uh, moves past the place and as close to Conquata as he can go. And that is the plan. Alrighty, one more turn until this is ready to go. We could upgrade the Stomp and Grounds if we want to get Grimgore a couple giants. And I think that we do. And then this place is more or less okay. We do still have to upgrade the fighting pit, though, so we'll wait on that. Alrighty, what else do we have in terms of buildings? The Lost Road. Newland is being built to let us upgrade, I guess, the boss's shack. I did want to get rid of this boss's shack, but I guess we'll wait on that one. Once our public order is a little bit better. Uh, boss's pull for you, and then, of course, more raiding stashes. We want these pretty much everywhere. The post-battle loot income will... 
keep us afloat even once we start going negative in predicted income, which we most definitely will once we have a lot of uh, our units up and running. Speaking of, Black Orcs next turn. Hmm. I have dropped a little bit in the way of money, but it's okay. Alrighty, I guess that's another quick end turn. Ugh, you don't have to move, but everybody else will attack this turn. Well, I guess technically Grimgore is just going to be sitting nearby, but uh, more or less attack. Alright, let's see if these guys actually manage to move anywhere. By these guys, I mean the defenders of the Great Plan. I'm itching to take hold of all of Albion here. And then spread out to Norska and Bretonia. All right, War Machine Focus. Ah, yes, we have our uh, new workshop constructed. You, Kodawa begins. Grimgore, I'd like you to go into regular stance for a few seconds. And go right here near this terror. Oh, you can't move much. Uh, and go right here. Hopefully you can still go into March stance. You grab this. There's some enemies, but... Not worth fighting, let's face it. Not with Grimgore's force. And we shall occupy the place. Very nice, very nice. Another Berserker Sword. And hey, the eight peak loonies. You're going to need that since you're a night goblin man. Uh, you, Grimgore, are going to start march dancing all the way this way. And oh, would you look at that? We got, uh, we got a Wa and even some Black Orcs in the Wa. Very nice. Probably going to have to delete these regular Orc boys as well. Who we are not deleting, however, is you guys. Oh, wait. Wait. Three out of four. Are you kidding me? Uh, Wa. Wa. When the Wa makes black orcs, it uh, counts them as if. Huh. Well, that's annoying. It counts for our uh, capacity. That shouldn't happen at all. We have one black orc here unit, one here. And then I guess, yeah, one here as well. Damn you, Waz. Alrighty, well, it'll disappear eventually, but damn. That's going to put a wrench in our recruitment capacities. Damn, that's going to permanently put a wrench in our recruitment capacities. Huh. Okay, we'll have to uh, give that some thought. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we have here. Another Black Orc big boss with Shroom Groa. It is a bit unfortunate to lose the... Uh, there's a little bit of income post-battle loop, but it's okay. It'll be worth our time. And another group... Ow! Oh. Hmm. Okay, wait. We're going to get you, River Troll Hag. Also... Oh, hello. Mushroom Addicted. Upkeep reduction for goblin and night goblin units. But that also works. And it doesn't really... Well, this works in the goblin army in particular. All right. We'll do you. What a shiny lover. Again, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, we'll do you. And we will do the black work as well. Shroom Groa. I like so. Ugh, you will begin recruitment of, I think, the Night Goblins first. So let's go... No, we're getting plenty of archers, clearly. Uh, let's go f six archers, Night Goblin archers, plus the Rusty Errors, which I don't think are actually Night Goblin archers, but they are archers. Oh no, they are Night Goblin archers. Fantastic. All right, then, assuming that we have the eight peak loonies, you know what? Let's just let's just get rid of the uh, get rid of one of these regular work boys and the regular gobos. We won't be needing them. Are there other gobo units here? There are, but not the ones that we're gonna take. So let's take the eight peak loonies, which are night goblin fanatics, and then you guys are regular night goblins. And then we'll have a main line made up of you guys, and then some squigs as well. Is this perhaps too many archers? Hmm. We might want to get some rock lobbers in here. You know what, let's do four for now, and then let's do some Night Goblin Fanatics. And we may get more, depending. I'm going to get some Doom Divers, but they're going to take a few turns before we can get them up and running. Uh, Black Orc Barracks here. We'll certainly need the capacity. And speaking of, let's build the rest of the buildings. In Gabo Town right there. Muddy Point to let's get to the Boss's Shack. Nah. Oh, we can do both. All right. Well, then we will do both. Plain of Bones right here. Citadel of Lead. We will max you, or upgrade you, rather. And let's get that boss pole up and running as well. And let's get to the... I was going to say boss tent, but we can't, so I guess we'll start with idols, and then we'll continue with other stuff, and then you are going to get that squig nest, so we'll build a squig uh, structure here. You are going to go for another Gabo tunnel. 
And let's temporarily upgrade this boss shack just so I don't have to constantly look at it. And uh, need to upgrade. I think you can now switch back out of give it here, huh? Well, I guess we will be building stuff, but for now I think the public order will be better prioritized. So we'll do that. We have the same thing here, but we'll switch it next turn. Oh, you're already in Camp Ruckus. Ah, you know what? Undo this and then switch briefly to give it here. You're already in Give It Here, and you don't need to be anymore. And it's not at the current time, so switch back to Camp Ruckus. I mean, Give It Here doesn't do anything for recruitment, and it does not. All right, Camp Ruckus for you. All right, just trying to reduce the times it takes to get all those uh, buildings up and running. All right, back to this. Whale Coast, yes to the port, yes to the horde, and most definitely need public order here, so... Boss's tent. This will be a big money-making province? Well... Insofar as we can consider anything a big money-making province for the orcs. And I believe that's it. Uh, we will probably also want another lord to recruit, but I guess you can transfer stuff, so we'll hold off. Alright, commandment available here. And go immediately into Camp Ruckus. And I guess we can immediately start collecting the income here. Where are we not collecting income? Sherwield Forest will probably never collect income there. And in fact, if we don't, we can switch you to permanently be in Give It Ear, so that these things take a little bit less time. Mm, Great Ohm, you're collecting income, and the Bleakmoor is not, but that is fine. All right, it looks like another end turn. Let's knock Conquata out, shall we? Yeah, I'm on now. Damn, did they move or did they not? I missed it. I'm very much wondering whether they'll attack this and we'll have to reinvest in it, but now it looks like we're okay. Uh, tribute for control, yes. I'm not even... Look, I love growth, but control is going to be permanently an issue. Uh, Grimgore, you cannot reach Conquata. Ryan shame. Go into ambush stance then. Go right outside of Lost Erickson's Landing. We'll see if we can bait them into it. While Spite Blood Reaper heads towards Bleakmoor temporarily until he heads back towards the Night Gabos. Then you, Black Orc Big Boss, are going to go to Grimgore. You are going to stay with the Night Gabos to reduce their costs. And we will continue building. Ah, uh, including the Black Works, but for now, other stuff. Let's get to the Doom Diver six turns. Okay, that's gonna... yeah. Maybe even better to get the Black Work Barracks. I don't see they're both fine. Yeah, money's dropping. Money's dropping. As expected. Uh, I could get some of these squigs in here, or we could... Can't really build squigs yet, can we? We don't have the building yet. Hmm. All right, we'll have to wait a little bit. Uh, Lonely Ogben, let's upgrade you as well as that totem pole, as well as... I guess another one of these Gabo tents. All right, how's our research rate looking? 121, not that great. We'll need to steal some techs, but uh, we can't do it yet. All right, let's end one more turn. At least we'll get the Gobby Gabos upgrade up and running as well. But we should also recruit stuff. Black Orcs are going to take a while, so you need more Night Gabos. Let's go one... Well, we'll have six if we do this one, plus the two that we got. And then... Hmm. One doesn't seem like a lot. Wait, can we build them here? No, but we will be able to. You know what? Go right to the edge of this territory. Build one more Fanatic. Like so. And... can we build any kind of squigs? No. I do want those squiggies. Let me just double check here. Where is that squig building being built? It is right here, so we'll need to build it in the Citadel of Lead, which is quite... Uh, it's quite distant. Alright, the rest of this I think is fine. You just recruit. Even if it's a little bit of extra time, gonna double check about any new lords, or heroes rather. Oh, actually, we should check lords. Uh, we got a Shroom Grower, upkeep reduction. That's a pretty good Goblin Great Shaman, which we may want to get on the field. The rest of these aren't particularly interesting, so we'll wait. All right, end the turn. Grimgore, knock Kuata out for good. 
And let's see if they're worth fighting or not. Grimgork has quite a few units in his WA as well. So he doesn't really need Spite Blood Reaper to support. Maybe I should have sent him out to uh, grab islands and... Oh! Oh, you idiots. I wasn't expecting that to work, but... <laughs> I just did that in case they went for our uh, territory. Let's get the uh, slaughter captives for the extra control. Fantastic, though. It certainly works. We could send Grimgore for the island if Spite can reach Conquata. And because it should have the same exact type of defenses, yeah. Not much more than what we faced off against. I mean, Grimgore has already destroyed so, so many of those lizard piles. I'm a little bit tempted by the fight, but... Mm. What do we have in terms of the... I mean, we can make this... Oh, you can't reach it, can you? It has to be Grimgore. And a little bit of a shame. I was hoping he could do it for us. All right, what about Wa Begins? You can reach at least in this manner. We'll level them up in a second as well. Yeah, obviously decisive victory. It's mostly skinks. I will consider the fight. Doesn't seem necessary, but no, no. Consider it. Uh, you need to go this way now. You're going to grab your new gabos. You are going to head into the Pillar of Aga Go... Nope, into Great Ohm. And you're going to get some rock lobbers to later be replaced by the Doom Divers. All right, let's say, I don't know, two rock lobbers, plus we'll get the Regiment of Renown rock lobber as well, which we will have access to in a couple of levels, so fairly soon. All right, and then we'll need squigs or something to replace the squigs, which will for now be spider riders and actually, wait, we can get Durkit squigs, for example. I'm going to have a lot of Regiment of Renown in this particular army. Hmm. Ooh, Armored Squig Hoppers. I do like the sound of that. Yeah, we'll do Durkit Squigs as well. Alright, you'll, you'll deal with that in a sec. Uh, you, Knob Nails Dribble Chin. <laughs> Alright. The name generator isn't as good, perhaps, as the Vampire Coast name generator, but it's still pretty darn good. Uh, you. Hey, where are we getting the massive amount of bonus control from? Oh, it's because this place has two bosses, shacks. Yeah, okay. Well, that's not going to last. Uh, get that Gabo Town up and running. And get that Gabo Tunnel up and running. The Lost Road, you can get that boss's camp up and running. We'll probably have to replace you, but let's wait until the public order is basically maxed out. Bleakmore Port, Bleakmore Bus Pole, and then lastly, Bleakmore Rating Pits, Rating Scales, whatever. Low Fightiness, who? Cool. Oh, we don't care about your fighting us, good sir. What we also do care about, though, is this. Let's begin recruitment with a cheap lord of Black Orcs. Serial Dancer. Okay, nobody has the Black Orc bonus. No, nobody has it. Just double-checking, triple-checking. I guess Beard Connoisseur. We're, not, we're just going to use this as a recruiter. Eh, maybe Serial Dancer. Let's do that. There is nothing that you can get that will increase your recruitment capabilities. Let's start with four Black Orcs shielded. This is going to drop us to the negative, so we'll have to quickly sail to Britonia and get some cash for our trouble. Oh, and we'll get Grimgore a couple giants as well. Oh, are they less expensive than Black Orcs? 361, yeah, I think they are. But they will fit in nicely, so we're still going to get them. I uh, we will start recruitment on them next turn so that they finish at the same time as the black orcs. I guess we'll get one of these guys as well. All right, got to remember that we also got to put the legendary black orcs in Grimgore's army. And I might not give him any artillery. I'm not sure. Just piles of black orcs of various kinds and uh, giants. Anyway, I believe that's it. Money's dropping. Norsk is nearby though. And wait, what? Is this Slaneshi? Yeah, Sanashi Corruption and Chaos Corruption. I take it the Chaos is from the Norskans. Oh, Lokir Felhart is here. And the Drowned are here. So Vampire Coast and Dark Elves to fight. But it's green territory in Norsk, at least the frozen part, not the Chaos Wastelands, so we'll have to take it. Anyway, uh, we're going to fight this because I don't see another battle happening in this particular episode. And uh, but this will be so hilariously easy. We could advance a little bit further, take a few more turns, a little bit more admin. Nah, but I want another fight. Let's do another fight, damn it. Uh, let us level up 
just Grimgore, because we don't need anybody else leveled. Get him even more completely necessary weapon strength. Oh! You know what? No, you know what? We're going to auto resolve this. I just thought of something. We'll do the quest battle instead. That'll be a better battle. This is just sad. Uh, let us do Occupy. Those guys would have been crushed pretty much immediately. Wa Occupy. Defenders of the Great Plan destroyed. Really unfortunate that Nakai could not come back, but oh well. All right. Grimgor, next turn you'll be doing the quest battle. Uh, we've got Black Orcs being built. Everything else I'm reasonably happy about. Though we are out of capacity. Not going to bother with the Savage Orc Biggins. We'll make a Savage Orc army separately. All right. Already end the turn, and then Ike Kinkwata, we are, or we should be, leveling you up immediately. Right here to the Greenskin Camp, and right here to the Idols, then we end the turn. What did I not build at Muddy Point? Oh. Boss's Camp. Ah, build a Boss's Camp. We're gonna need it. And then we'll replace this Boss's Camp, perhaps? Depending how the public order is later. End turn. Let's see if anybody sails nearby. I sincerely doubt it. But I think we're going to take a few administrative turns while Grimgore gets uh, set up with his new army. Maybe sails around to grab a few islands and that are off our coastline. But everything else will be fine. All right, now you guys need to swap stuff. First of all, get rid of this garbage. In fact, I should have gotten rid of it uh, over the last few turns. Like so... Then, uh, let's see if I can figure this out. What do you need to take? Take all of the night goblins, like so. Give up your spiders for now. We will want, I don't know, let's say six squigs. Let's say take one, two, three, four spiders. And then room for three. Yes, okay, let's do that. Like so. Hmm. You know what? We'll probably build like a ultra squiggy army. It just won't be this army. Oh, did I do that the wrong way around? No, I didn't. Okay. Got myself confused there. Yeah, you know what? Let's save Durkit's squigs for just like the complete squig army. This one's going to be a little bit too uh, night goblin-y. In fact, I'm almost tempted to not even bother with the spider riders and just go even more night goblins. If we're going to lean into it. Minus the giant river troll hag, and then we can do the trolls then. If we don't have to rely on the squigs, and the squig army can be squigging around elsewhere. Uh, let us then get you two stone trolls, like so. I was going to build those two giants, but now we can't. We don't have the uh, we don't have the capacity, but whatever. Uh, then you went to regular stance. Now we'll have to. Okay, wait, 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 wait. I mean, maybe we still need these guys to chase stuff down. You know, let's let's do it like this for now. We're already building a couple of the uh, goblin rock lobbers, after all. Yo, Grimgore, let's do your quest battle, shall we? Does that delete your wa? I wonder. Ooh, Capitano Sisako, we can fight you. Uh, not now, but right now we'll do the quest battle. Mudforged armor time. Let us get choppers for you. He only has. He has one big chopper, not multiple choppers. Uh, let's go for... I guess sharpened choppers to make you hit harder, sir. Talking about Mr. Scram da Ruffy. I like so. I'll level everybody up for the quest battle. Mm, let's go with... You know what? I use Edbutt in pretty much every battle. And then there we go. I max that out. Also get rid of the goblin big boss and put them in the... Uh, Gobbo army, I think. We'll need s oh, we'll need several goblin units in that army. Yeah, okay. That'll definitely mean a good reason to get the. Uh... Wait, what? Uh, definitely mean a good reason to get the spiders out of it. And I guess we'll get the purple sun as a race. I'm still probably not going to use it too much over the uh, orky stuff, but it could happen in a different army. Let's get you holler in. Like so. And then let's get to it. Wherefore is the Bloodforged Armor right here? Let's give this a read. 
And, ooh, hell cannons. That should be interesting. And some other stuff. A goblin scout brings word that an unusual number of gyrocopters had been traveling back and forth between various dwarf holds and the northernly World's Edge Mountains. Something is clearly brewing. Anything that might bring the stunties out from behind the doors of their mountain fastnesses has got to be good news. It turns out that a force of Chaos Warriors is approaching High Pass in the northern World's Edge Mountains. They are clearly returning north from the Darklands where they are known to trade with the wicked Chaos Dwarfs. For items of power, angering the other stunties. With the scent of battle in his nostrils, Grimgore marches over the reporting scout, heading north. Teleport. Alrighty, and we've got some reinforcements. Ooh, the Chaos Knights are going to give us some trouble. And so are the Hell Cannons if we can't knock them out before they can do anything, but let's find out if we can. Away. While others quail at the thought of fighting chaos, for Grimgore this is more than a mere challenge. It is an absolute joy. Be wary though, if the Northmen worship the Blood God, then it'll be a straight up scrap, but if they are dedicated to one of the sneakier powers, then there may be a few surprises, or even traps, to confront. Those chaos men have got some shiny stuff. Think they can keep it from us? This gets them out of the yard. They got squiffy gods that'll turn them into gribbly monsters if they're not. So, we're gonna have a good square. The northern humans better not disappoint. What's more, they're all in a load of shiny stuff back from the big atted stunties. They think they can keep it from us. I want it all. Go down, lads! Alrighty, here we go. This should be a pretty interesting battle. The enemy has a few massive advantages here. First of all, the Chaos Knights, A, we don't know where they're coming from, and B, they're going to be very difficult to deal with. Then, of course, we have the fact that the enemy has a Chaos Sorcerer to whom both Burning Head and Flame Storm are available, so we'll have to watch out for that. And then, of course, the two Hell Cannons. We can't just move straight towards the enemy, uh, uh, the enemy line here, as the Hell Cannons will absolutely decimate our biggins and our black orcs these things especially now that they have the buffs for the uh, various things the various homing things which i believe included the hell cannons are a lot more devastating than they used to be we're going to try our best to get around them so a couple of our cavalry units are hidden back here they are hiding behind the mountains and thus invisible to the enemy line we also have our un our goblin big boss who has stock so he might be able to hit the hell cannons then the unit of goblin doom divers they actually do very slightly outrange hell cannons so we should in theory be able to knock them out and though as to whether that is uh, uh, that is going to be successful we'll have to wait and see as I don't know how many hits from a hell cannon a unit of doom divers survive or can survive and there we go the chaos knights have made it onto the field three units with lances though so they're the shock cav variety and that's a little bit less dangerous to us than the regular knights Nonetheless, it does mean that we can't march forward until we figure out what these knights are going to do, as they will be very, very difficult to deal with. Alright, and it looks like they've decided to go straight for us. We have a few units of regular orc boys on the flank, so this is going to hurt. These aren't biggins. Although it looks like they do have decent amounts of mass, so certainly enough to bog the enemy knights down. So bog them down we shall, get them to hopefully sit still and then hit them with our boar boy biggins. Surround and destroy. The other unit of uh, the uh, chaos knights have moved in as well, but the biggins have found them. And Grimgore has moved in to hopefully bring down a chaos knight with every blow. There we go. All right, now the Chaos Knights are in trouble. We are going to have a difficult time making them sit still, but as we can see, the biggins with their armor piercing and Grimgore and the war boss are dishing out tons of damage to these guys. And then these ones got surrounded by the boar boys together with the orc boys and got hit with the soul blight as well, so they weren't able to do too much. Unfortunately, the enemy units of hell cannons have moved into range and have started to take shots at our black orcs, dishing 
taking out more than half of their HP and damage. And we're gonna have to back... Oh, that was a nice shot. Gonna have to back the Black Orcs off unless they get destroyed. Not too much in the way of model losses, but any more hits will ensure that we do get model losses, so we're gonna have to back off. On the bright side, though, the Doom Divers are now firing at... The, well, I guess they have been firing at the Hell Cannons, and they have managed to knock the first one out. Nice little bit of artillery sniping. Though, clever move by the AI, it's keeping this entire army back. So we aren't able to move the Goblin Big Boss or our units of Cav in to deal with those damn uh, Hell Cannons. Uh, good job to the AI. Though it did have to sacrifice its Chaos Knights to do this. Kind of an interesting dynamic in this particular battle. I'm very much enjoying it. Although sacrificing your Chaos Knights may not be the right decision, even if they did manage to dish out plenty of damage to the Black Orcs. With their Hell Cannons, I mean, while the distraction was ongoing. Anyway, another, you know, the Black... of the Chaos Knights, rather, not Black Knights. I play too many Vampire Counts. Uh, the Chaos Knights are out, broken, broken, and shattered. And while these two will come back, they're not much in the way of a threat anymore. Now we just have to get that Doom Diver to knock... There we go, out the other Hell Cannon, and the biggest threats are off the field. We've taken damage. The Hell Cannons have dished out uh, plenty of damage to Orc Boys. The a couple of units of biggins and a couple of un or and the black orcs as well. Hell cannon, 30k damage and 151 kills. And this one didn't do as much, but this is the one that probably got destroyed first by the doom diver. Man, this is still making me consider: Do we put several doom divers into Grimgor's army, or do we not bother? I don't know. I feel like Grimgor's army should be pretty much an all orky army. Just like tons of black orcs, some giants, because they'd be a, kind of a status symbol, essentially, for the, uh, uh, for orcs. Hmm. But the Doom Divers do clearly come in handy. We'll see. I'll think about it. I will think about it. I still kind of like the idea of just a massive pile of, uh, melee units. It would feel very appropriate for Grimgor. Man, imagine if we could somehow get some Dreadquakes. I think the aversion to Grimgor's faction will prevent it, and because of his rebellion against the uh, against his uh, Chaos Dwarf Masters, but who knows? Who knows? If we get to uh, perhaps capture a settlement and gift it to them, the Chaos Dwarfs, I mean, and then perhaps uh, declare war on a bunch of their enemies, it might be possible. Anyway. Time for the main hosts to collide, and ooh, just before, just as we're about to charge in, the enemy hits us with a burning head and a flamestorm. I did say we have to watch out for that, and we're going to have to back off the units, so this Orc Boy's units is pretty much decimated, and will no longer be useful in this particular battle. Though it looks like the burning head at least did manage to clip a few of the enemy's own units. Once the flamestorm has spent itself, which it appears to have done so, we start heading back into it. Axes do fly, but we have axes of our own, and cleavers and maces and whatnot, and it'll be marauders versus biggins, and that should be very much in our favor. We do have enemy chariots moving around, as well as the enemy lord, and is that another flamestorm? No, that is not. That is a cascading fire cloak, and getting a few defensive stats on the enemy. Because obviously the flame storm it would be on cooldown at that point. Ruinous, don't panic, man. All right. <laughs> Uh, but fortunately, and now that we are very much in our own element, Grimgor's Wa activates the Boar Boys move in now that they're no longer chasing enemy Chaos Knights and hit the enemy Chaos Warriors and Marauders in the flanks. Should be a pretty decently heavy amount of damage there. We've also got all the enemies tied up and just a matter of attrition now. There's a foot of Gork coming down, doing pretty big damage, pretty big numbers. In fact, crippling every single unit over on this flank. You gotta love that spell. And in fact, that might have been enough army losses to basically destroy the army. I see a lot of enemy Chaos Warriors uh, breaking from that. A uh, few of the enemy Chaos Chariots are still fighting. We do have a little bit of a skirmish going on in the background as well as Chaos Warriors and the Marauder Horsemen are facing off against our Cav and our Goblin Big Boss. But fortunately, the extremely irritating Gobbo Wolf Cav is far too fast to ever get caught. 
In melee, I mean. So this little duel will continue for quite the while. Although they might also be sufficiently weak in range that they would get destroyed over time, so we'll have to consider that as well. Anyway, we can see the leadership dropping Grimgore just moving along the battlefield, uh, bringing down Chaos Warriors as he pleases. Probably a little bit upset at those Hell Cannons. There we go, nice hit, and huh, it almost looked like he brought a boar boy down with that hit, but uh, it was the Chaos Warrior, I'm sure. Although perhaps you want to stay out of Grimgore's way just in case. Bounce power hits 90%, 100%, and then the rest of the army shatters. Very nice. Very nice battle. Might be my favorite battle of this campaign so far. Maybe second favorite. I really like that battle against Yuan Bo's two stacks as well. Uh, but uh, the dynamic of this battle was particularly interesting due to the way we didn't immediately get to engage and had to deal with the Chaos Knights unless, our, uh, unless they hit our back lines while we marched towards those hell cannons certainly if we had a couple more doom divers we would have been able to knock the enemy hell cannons out before they could have done anything but that wasn't a part really a possibility in this particular battle so yeah yeah close victory nonetheless and we did get to acquire the blood forged armor and at the same time we'll heal up just fine as there are no enemies to stand against us Six nine 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 money. Nice. Also, a very nice battle that was certainly much more difficult than the battle against the uh, the remnants of the Lizardmen would have been. Certainly, we took a lot of damage to our regular boys units, but these guys are all getting deleted relatively shortly anyway, so I guess that doesn't matter much. Happy with the result. We are going to, I guess, once again take the control, because... Nah, yeah, take the control. Keep our territory is oh and we'll get even more control via the uh, casualty replenishment as well but more importantly uh, the blood forged armor melee defense which is really needed by grimgore and a ward save plus a little bit of extra armor and the armor explosion ability knockback effect will help him hunt down enemy lords especially when he has to go through a press of enemies otherwise it looks like we are good grimgore you're gonna head out to that island next turn as you can sit in Lost Erickson's Landing for a turn. And we'll spend the next couple of turns recruiting while Grimgore sails down here, joins with the armies, and then we'll send one army to Norska and probably one army to Kurun, or maybe we'll start on Norska. I don't know, I haven't decided. Might be getting a fight with Capitano Sisiko as well, but we'll have to save that for next time because we are once more out of time. And next time we will be getting massive retrofits going and we'll have to have aggressive times as we will go negative in terms of our money generation and we're going to need to counterbalance slash counteract that. Stay tuned for more orcs. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.